Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to model structural members in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler using STAD Pro Connect Edition. In this particular video, we're going to be focusing on reviewing our model in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler and then using that to create our analytical model in the STAD Pro environment. And at this point in our workflow, we're ready to go ahead and think about creating our analytical model for the first time. Now before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and check a few things in the physical modeler to make sure everything is created as I intended it to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the model tab in the ribbon toolbar and perform an integrity check. This is used to perform a range of checks for duplicate objects, overlapping objects, orphan nodes, warped surfaces, and zero length members. It's definitely a good idea to go ahead and perform one of these checks each time you translate data from the physical modeler over to the analytical modeler. So I'm going to activate that tool by clicking on the model integrity check icon. Here I can select all the items that I want to check for and if I would like any additional information I can go ahead and click on the show help option. Now here I'm going to go ahead and ask the program to validate and I have all options selected at this point. Now in the output pane at the bottom of the window, it'll let you know if you have any um, items that were detected during that integrity check. Here I have none reported. Now if it did report any options, I would have the option while this dialog is open to go ahead and delete them. So if a duplicate member or a duplicate node were found, I can tell the program to go ahead and delete those and make sure that everything is consistent. So now that I've performed the integrity check, I can go ahead and close that dialog and move on my workflow. The next thing I also want to review is the analysis model options. This will basically be used to specify the units, the analysis model options, and the model display controls. To access this tool, we're going to go to the data tab in the ribbon toolbar, and we're going to find our options icon. Now within this area, if there was ever a point where you wanted to change your input units, you can go ahead and do that here. You can also change your visualization and enter your dynamic properties. The area I'm going to point your attention to, however, since we're talking about creating our analytical model, is the analysis model options. This will be a way for you to be able to control how the physical model is then translated to be an analytical model. Now a few key pieces of information for the model that I have right now is I'm going to go ahead and leave all these options checked. So the program will automatically add an intermediate node at intersections. It'll go ahead and automatically segment members that's in line with my analytical modeling philosophy. And it'll also go ahead and segment surfaces. Now if I did have any surfaces in this particular model, I'd be able to go ahead and enter the mesh type and mesh tolerances. And then if I also had some loading options, I can go ahead and enter some information on that. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and click OK as everything in that dialog is as I would intend it to be. Now one last thing we can do before leaving the physical modeler is to go ahead and view what your analysis model will look like once we get it over. This will be another final check to make sure everything is as you intended it to be. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and go to the View tab in the Ribbon Toolbar, and then I'm going to click on the Analysis Model icon. Now what this will do is it will go ahead and give you a preview of what that will look like. You will have the option to go ahead and return to your Options menu if anything was uh, not as you intended. And here if I zoom on in, we'll be able to see that. See that bottom cord will be automatically segmented, so will each of these top chords, so will these columns. And so that's in line with how the analysis and design will take place on the analytical model. Now in the output pane at the bottom of the screen, it's going ahead and letting you know that there is some information still missing from this model. And at this point, that's okay with me since I haven't actually assigned any sections or material properties as of yet. So I'm completely aware that those will not be translated over to the analytical model at this point. 
Now the way this workflow works is I can go back and forth between the analytical model. So this is my first time creating the analysis model in this particular system. Um, I can come back to the physical modeler, add in things like sections, materials, supports, and loads, and so forth. Now, while you're in the analytical modeling view, the program is going to go ahead and let you know with the text on the screen that that's what you're looking at. And you will see several different icons will be grayed out as the program doesn't exactly want you to do any other manipulation while within this screen. So to rectify that, let's go ahead and turn this model analysis off. Okay. At this point, we are ready to go ahead and create our analytical model. To do that, we're going to go to the Model tab in the Ribbon Toolbar, and we are going to find the Analytical Modeling icon. This will basically return us to the Analytical Modeler. The model has been changed. Do I want to save it? Yes. The program is going to ask you to save before creating officially that model. Our model has now been sent over to the analytical modeling view. If I wanted to review this information, I'd be able to go ahead and see my node spreadsheet and also my beams spreadsheet. At this point, that's all the information I have in this particular model. What you're going to notice is that all the physical members were segmented when the model was sent over to the STAD Pro analytical modeler in preparation for completing the analysis and design. What you're also going to notice is that all of your icons in the ribbon toolbar within the analytical modeler are currently grayed out. The reason for that is you can go ahead and review your information in the analytical modeler, but the program won't allow you to add any additional information. So for example, I wouldn't be able to assign section properties or material properties, loads, or even analysis commands once I get over to the analytical modeler. The reason for that is we need to make sure that we have consistency between our physical model and our analytical modeler. And those are items or commands that you would add in the physical modeler. So to maintain consistency, we've gone ahead and grayed out those icons. In addition to that, you're also going to notice that certain areas of the input file are unavailable to be edited in the analytical modeler. And again, for the same reason, because those items should be specified in the physical modeler to maintain consistency. Now you can go ahead and review your input file if you would like to. So we're going to go to the Utilities tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and click on the Command File icon. And what we're going to notice is that everything that's specified by the physical modeler will be currently grayed out. And it's going to start with this option of uh, Start, Do Not Edit. And it'll go on down until it gets to the end of all the information that was specified from the physical modeler. Now, if I'm using this for my complete uh, analysis and design workflow, basically everything from modeling through analysis commands would be entered in the physical modeler. Design commands at this point are still entered to the analytical modeler. So what we're going to notice is that those commands uh, are available to you. So you can see here that these options um, are all available. And this is where you would perform your analysis and design, even if you're not entering all of those commands in the analytical modeler. Now, if at any point you decide that you want to break the link with your analytical modeler and move forward with just your physical modeler, you do have the option to do that. So let's go to the Utilities tab in the Ribbon Toolbar, and you could click on this Drop Physical Model icon. What that will do is it will go ahead and officially drop your physical modeler. It will turn everything to be editable in the input file and also through the analytical modeler graphical user interface. A word of caution while using this command, however, is this is a one-time operation. Once you drop your physical model, you can't really quite get it back and say, I want to start editing things in the physical modeler again. Now, a way to get around that is you could go ahead and do a save as in case at some point you want to come back to it. But again, any of your new information that you put in your model wouldn't be available in that physical model. So definitely use that command with a little bit of caution. Now that we've gone over some simple modeling steps on how to create a physical model in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler, let's wrap up this course by also discussing what the full complete 
physical modeling workflow would look like. Now, all of your major modeling steps will take place in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler if you choose to go in that direction. This will include all of your model geometry, all of your properties and specifications, all of your load cases and load combinations, along with your analysis commands. Now, if after that you're also planning on to moving on to a design phase with STAD Pro, we would recommend going with the STAD Pro main application for steel design and the STAD RCDC for the design of your concrete systems. This completes our process for modeling physical members in the STAD Pro physical modeler. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.